Here is a problem that was left as a comment on one of my videos. And it says, you have eight coins in a bag. Three of them are unfair in that they have 60% chance of coming up heads when flipped. The rest are fair coins. You randomly choose two coins from the bag and flip each of them one time. What is the percent probability of getting two heads? I'm going to begin solving this with a tree diagram, but before I get into that, let's just think about the possible outcomes of the coins you could pick out. And this is without replacement, right? So we're picking the first coin out and then there'll be seven coins left in the bag. Then we'll pick the second coin out. So let's just think about the possible outcomes of those two picks. So firstly, we could pick a fair coin and then another fair coin. And then we could pick a fair coin and then a biased coin. Or it could be the other way around. We could get a biased coin first and then a fair coin second. But I'm going to consider those as the same outcome, a fair and a biased coin. Or I could get a biased coin and then another biased coin. Okay, so we're thinking about the probability of getting two heads with each of these possibilities. So a fair coin, then a fair coin. They have a 50% chance of getting heads each time for each flip. So if I got two fair coins, the probability of getting two heads would be a quarter, sorry, a half multiplied by a half, which is a quarter. And the probability of a fair and a biased coin, the probability of two heads would be, well, a fair coin is still a half for flipping a head. And then a biased coin is 60%. I'm going to change that to a fraction. That's going to be three out of five as a fraction. The probability of two heads there then is a half times three fifths. That's three on 10. And then a bias coin and a bias coin, the probability of two heads there is going to be three fifths multiplied by three fifths. That's nine out of 25. Okay, so that are my probabilities for two heads for each of those different possibilities. So let's get into the tree diagram now of the probabilities of getting each of these outcomes. So a fair coin and a fair coin, what's the probability of that? A fair and a bias coin, what's the pr probability there? And a bias and a bias coin. So the tree diagram. For the first pick, the first pick, let's think about the branches there. Well, what are the outcomes? I could pick a fair coin or a bias coin. So they're going to be my two branches. And the probability of a fair coin, I have five fair coins, eight coins total. So that's going to be five out of eight, a five out of eight chance of getting a fair coin on the first pick. And then I'll have a three out of eight chance of getting a bias coin on the first pick. On my second pick of choosing the coins out of the bag, I'll have again the probability of getting a fair coin or a bias coin. This time the probabilities change because I've already picked a coin out. The There are now seven coins in the bag and I have four fair coins left if I pick a fair coin first. So this is going to be four out of seven for a the second pick being a fair coin. The bias coin, I have seven coins in the bag, but I still have three bias coins left because I picked a fair coin first. And now the second branch for the biased coin first. Again, I have the chance of getting a fair or a bias coin. The fair coin will be, now I still have five fair coins left in the bag and I have a total of seven coins in the bag. And then a bias coin second, if I choose a bias coin first, that's going to be two out of seven chance. Okay, so I've got my tree diagram. Now I want to find the probabilities of getting each of these branches. And to do that, we multiply along the branches. And I want to make it really clear why we multiply in case you know it's confusing why we're doing that or you've maybe you've forgotten why we multiply along the branches. It's the same principle as multiplying fractions, right? So if we look at a square, and we split that up into quarters. Okay, not a square, but you get the idea. And then I split one of those quarters up into quarters again. And let's shade one of those quarters green. What's the fraction of that green square out of the total square? Well, I know that it's a quarter of a quarter. So a quarter of a quarter, we multiply those. It's the same as dividing a quarter by four, right? Multiplying a quarter by a quarter is the same as dividing that quarter by a four. And then a quarter times a quarter is a sixteenth. So that green square is a sixteenth out of the total square. So that's why we're multiplying along the branches. It's a fraction of a fraction. So five out of eight times four over seven. 
uh, I'm going to leave these unsimplified so all of the denominators will be the same 5 times 4 is 20 8 times 7 is 56 and then multiplying along this branch 5 eighths times 3 sevenths 5 times 3 is 15 and the denominator again is 56 this one's going to be the same because all of the fractions are the same this is 15 out of 56 and then the biased and a biased coin that's going to be 3 times 2 which is 6 over 56 and because these are essentially the same outcome a fair and a biased coin I'm going to add these together or combine them so 15 56 plus 15 56 is 30 out of 56 and so now I have my possible outcomes or my probabilities for picking the coins. The probability of getting a fair coin and then a fair coin is 20 out of 56. The probability of getting a fair and a biased coin is 30 out of 56. And the probability of two biased coins is 6 out of 56. And now let's go back to these probabilities we worked out for flipping two heads with each outcome. So I had for a fair and a fair coin, I had a probability of a quarter. A fair and a biased coin, I had a probability of 3 out of 10. And a bias and a bias coin, I had a probability of 9 out of 25. Again, we can use this principle of multiplying to say the probability of picking a fair coin and a fair coin and then flipping two heads is 20 out of 56 multiplied by a quarter. And then the probability of getting a fair and a bias coin or a bias and a fair coin is 30 out of 56 multiplied by 3 out of 10, the probability of getting two heads there. And then the probability of getting two bias coins and then two heads is going to be 6 out of 56 multiplied by 9 out of 25. And then what we're going to do is add all of those together. Why do we add? Again, you can think of this in terms of fractions. So if I go back to this square example, if I split another quarter up into halves, and let's shade one of those green as well, well, what now is the total of uh, green shaded area in this total square well this this fraction here is a half of a quarter a half of a quarter is an eighth and then what we want to do here is say well I've got a sixteenth over here and a, a, an eighth over here what's the total shaded it's a sixteenth plus an eighth a sixteenth plus an eighth and then what would we do here well we need the same denominator this would be 16, uh, 1 16th plus 2 sixteenths, which is 3 sixteenths. So that's why we're multiplying and adding, or well, that's one way to think about it. So what I'm going to do here is, is multiply these probabilities, add them all up, and then hopefully that should give us a, a correct answer. So what do we have? We had the probability of two fair coins, 20 over 56 multiplied by a quarter, 20 over 56 multiplied by a quarter plus 30 over 56, the probability of a fair and a biased coin, multiplied by the probability of two heads, 3 over 10, and then the probability of a bias and a biased coin, 6 over 56, multiplied by the probability of two heads, that was 9 over 25. Okay, then we just need to calculate this. So taking your calculator out for that, we've got uh, 20 over 56, multiplied by uh, 0.25 a quarter plus 30 over 56 multiplied by 3 tenths or 0.3 oops multiplied by 0.3 plus 6 over 56 multiplied by 9 25ths or 0.36 and that is I get a final answer of 0 0.2885 which I'm going to round off to 0 0.289 so round it off approximately 0.289 which is 28.9% uh, so that's my final answer now you might recognize this problem and it's actually very similar to a problem in a Khan Academy video it's just a slight variation of that and I think it shows how quickly you can complicate probability by just adding little details so the original problem I think said pick one coin and flip it two times and this question says pick two coins and flip them each one time. So just changing that little detail uh, really complicates the question and I guess shows you how quickly probability can, can become much more challenging. Okay, so I hope you liked that one. I hope that you find
find that explanation logical and you agree with my final answer, if you don't, let me know in the comments. I'll be taking a break this week over Easter. Uh, I hope that you have a chance to take a break as well. And then I'll be getting back into more videos after this week. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.